Today is Veterans Day, November 11th, 2017. And on this day, I want to recognize a special group of veterans who have served in the U.S. Armed Forces. That would be Filipino veterans. And I'm doing this in honor of a Filipino veteran who touched my life. And I'll be telling you about him a little bit. But today I spent the day, because of this one Filipino veteran, I spent the day doing some research and I ended up writing a paper about their service to America in World War II. And it was absolutely fascinating. I'm not much of a history buff, but I was absolutely fascinated by their, uh, fascinated to learn about their service. And so today in this video, I'm going to go ahead and read the paper that I wrote about their service. Now, let me introduce myself first. My name is Non Monogamous Mark. I'm a veteran myself, and I'm the co founder and executive director of Non Monogamous Lifestyles Association, where we take and help people to create a new normal in their life that is a sexually liberated normal in their life, in their community, and in their personal culture. This is a sexually liberated normal so that they can live a life that they can thrive and be happiest living. But let me go ahead and talk more about this Filipino veteran thing. You see, as a result of the Spanish-American War of, 19, or excuse me, of 1898, the Philippines were an American colony, and they were not given their independence by America until July 4th, 1946, and that was after the World War II ended. Well, the man that I honor today, who deeply touched my life, he was a Filipino man who was living in the islands of the Philippines and, uh, and then after the war came and immigrated to the U.S. But the year was 1980 and I was a 23-year-old college kid and newly married and I was a resident manager at a low-income senior citizen housing high-rise in Seattle, Washington that had 400 apartment units in it called Jefferson Terrace. And I don't even know this veteran's name, but he made a really great impact on my life. And that's why I did this research today. And I'm making this video in honor of the Filipino veterans who have served under the American flag. Now, this particular man, he didn't speak much English, but he would come down like many Filipinos, a little short people, you know, and he would come down a little short guy and every day he would join the residents in their community space, that they would try to get out of their small apartments and, and go out into the community space and greet one another. And he would always greet everybody with such a, a great energy and a smile about him. And, and he would also always wear his cap as being that he was a member of the Veterans of Foreign Wars. And it was this Veterans of Foreign Wars cap that had his medals pinned to it. And he'd always wear that whenever he came out of his apartment and into the community space. He was a very proud of his service as an American veteran. Well, I was in the reserves at the time. I had been on active duty for a couple of years. And at that point then, I was going to college and I was in the Army Reserves. And so every month, I'd have to go on for a weekend of Army Reserve duty. And I'd be putting on my military uniform. And a couple of times he happened to see me put on that military uniform. And after he saw me the first time with that military uniform on, he always paid me the greatest of respect because I also am a veteran and he knew what that meant. And then as this 23 year old college kid, I was just, I was there as the night manager, resident manager, which just simply meant that I had to be there in case there were any emergencies. Most nights there weren't, and I got to sleep a full night. Every once in a while I had to get up in the middle of the night because there was some kind of emergency going on. But I got a free apartment in the, in the, in the place amongst the about 450 um, low-income elderly senior citizens that lived in this, this high-rise unit. And the first Christmas I was there, this man, this Filipino veteran, after seeing me also as a veteran, he came and he gave me this great honor of a gift, and that was a smoked duck, complete with the head and eyes and feet and everything. And it's like I, I didn't want to want to like 
dishonor the man or insult him anyway. So I just gracefully accepted the gift. And uh, so there is this smoke duck, and I had no clue what to do with it. And uh, I kept it for a little while, and I honestly, at this point, I don't remember what I ended up doing with it. Um, but it was a smoke duck, and I guess that's a great delicacy for the Filipino people, and that was an honor then that he gave, he bestowed upon me by giving me that smoke duck for Christmas. So in honor of him today, I want to talk then about the Filipinos that became American veterans serving under the American Armed Forces. Well, the Philippines themselves understand, though, is that it's not a landlocked country. You know, they're not part of a continent. They are a group of, of seven, over 7,000 islands. And so they were in American territory when the war broke out. And on December 7th of 1941, the Philippines were invaded by the Japanese forces within a couple of hours after Pearl Harbor was attacked. Well, a year prior to this, the President Roosevelt sent out a call of duty in order to recruit Filipinos who were living in the Philippines at that time to fight for the American flag under the command of General MacArthur should the need arise. Well, over 260,000 Filipinos living in the Philippines answered the call, volunteering to fight under the American flag. They were promised benefits and, and you know, privileges and so forth after if they, if they signed up, just like American veterans get today. I mean, I got a college education out of being an American veteran. So when the invasion of the Japanese forces came to the Philippines, they invaded and they overpowered the Philippines forces, taking control of the Philippine islands. And when the Americans surrendered, they just left the Philippine forces there. Now, those Philippine forces, there were more than 100,000 of them that ended up as POWs. And yet, those who didn't, they continued to fight as guerrilla units on those 7,000 islands that the Phil make up the Philippines. They fought under deplorable conditions. More Filipinos died of starvation and disease than they did from the actual Japanese attacks. And yet they fought proudly and defended the honor of the American flag. Many of the U.S. Filipino troops did not surrender and they just kept fighting them as those guerrilla units. In fact, it's estimated that, that at the time the Americans finally took, regained the, uh, the islands, that there were a couple hundred thousands because they, they recruited other Filipinos. There were a couple hundred thousand Filipino guerrilla fighters in these units that were fighting the Japanese. Well, Filipinos in the United States who were living in the United States, they weren't citizens at that time, you know, just like many people that are here in, on uh, visas and what have you, and legal in the United States, but they're considered aliens. And so Philippines in the United States in, before the war broke out were also considered aliens, and, and they couldn't join the U.S. Armed Forces. They weren't allowed to because they weren't citizens. But after the Philippine Islands were attacked and invaded by the Japanese, the Philippines living in the United States wanted so badly to join the American forces that President Roosevelt signed an executive order allowing the Philippines to enlist into the American Armed Forces. There were two complete Filipino Army regiments that were formed. They were all Filipinos, and they went out and they fought many battles under the American flag. The Philippine Islands themselves were under Japanese occupation for more than two years and until October of 1944 when General MacArthur returned in a massive effort to regain control of the Philippines. The Japanese brought in over 20, excuse me, not 20,000, but 200,000 troops in order to defend the Philippine Islands, but they were overtaken by the Americans given the control of the Philippines back to the U.S. By the time the war was over, the Philippines had the second greatest amount of physical destruction. You know, like buildings that were destroyed, things like that. They had the second greatest amount of physical destruction of any nation. They were only superseded by Poland. The Philippines had more physical destruction than Germany, more than England, and more than Japan. More physical destruction than any other nation other than Poland. Well, the combined... It was 
throughout the course of the war, there was about 60,000 people, Filipinos, who died during the war that were serving as veterans, or they weren't veterans yet, but they were serving under the American flag as uh, soldiers. And 60,000 of them died. But there were also over a million civilians living in the Philippines who died during the two-year Japanese occupation of the Philippines. Some were died by the Japanese. The, they were treated ruthlessly at the hands of the Japanese. Then also some of them died with, with, because of the, of the famine. They were starving. And because of diseases, the conditions were just deplorable for the Philippine people during the two-year reign of the Japanese. So it wasn't really a good time during the war for the Filipino people. You know, those who were fighting for as American veterans, though, they deserve to be honored. But yet, in 1946, Democratic President Truman signed into law the Rescission Act of 1946, stripping Filipino Armed Forces veterans of their veterans' rights, making these Filipinos who were promised that they would become eligible for benefits and privileges and rights serving under the American flag, rescinding all of those rights. Now, there were six people from 66 different nationalities around the world that fought on behalf of the U.S. under the U.S. flag as American troops. And of those 66 nationalities, one of those nationalities were the Filipino people. And out of those 66 nationalities, there was only one nationality that were denied their American veteran benefits and privileges. Those were the Filipinos. That was because of this bill that was signed. There was, you know, the, the, the Rescission Act of 1946 that stripped the Filipinos of their veterans' rights. Well, the veterans, of course, the veteran Filipinos, they could have gotten really angry about that, and they could have rose up, and, and particularly those that were over there in the Philippines, you know, they could, have, they could have rioted and done all kinds of things, but these were very proud people. And even though they were stripped of their rights, they were still proud to have served under the American flag and be considered American veterans. Because yes, they were still recognized by like American, the, the VFW veterans of foreign wars, just the, our governments just stripped them of their benefits, that's all. Well, it took our politicians 75 years to right the wrong, but on October 25th, 2017, yep, just last month, there was a congressional ceremony in Washington, D.C. where the wrong was righted and they awarded those veterans who served under the American flag in World War II. They awarded, the, awarded the, each of those veterans, there's still some of them are living today, but then those who aren't living in their families were able to receive the award. They got the Congressional Gold Medal. And that's the Congressional Gold Medal is the highest honor that Congress can bestow on any civilian. Of course, those, all of those Filipinos living today are civilians, and, and those who aren't living today, their family members are civilians. And so they were able to get the Congressional Gold Medal just a month ago. You know, the Filipinos people, if you don't know anything about them, they really are. They're a, just a wonderful pe people. And in 2014, the, well, actually 2013 is when the study was done. It was reported in 2014. But there's this thing called the Global Attitudes Project. It's run by the Pew Research Center in Washington, D.C. And they go around the world asking people in every nation, from every country around the world, of one question. Do you have a favorable or unfavorable view of the U.S.? Now, people in the, America, in the United States are asked the same question by the same organization. And in the United States, the people that live in the United States, only 81% of the people answer the question when asked, do you have a favorable or unfavorable view of the U.S.? Only 81% of the people living here answer the question by saying it's a favorable view. But yet in the Philippines, 
85% of the people in the Philippines asked when, when they were asked that question said they have a they answered saying that they had a favorable view of the US. In fact it is that Filipino people have the highest ranking and the most favorable view of any people anywhere around the world of the US. And so these are people that are loyal to the US. These are people who are proud and those veterans who served in our armed forces because they served in the Korean War as well. And I'll be maybe some other time making a video about some of that because that's fascinating as well. But I don't want to go too long here today. And so I just want to honor those Filipino veterans that have served under the U.S. flag on this Veterans Day. So thanks a lot. And I hope that you found this as fascinating as I did in this little bit of history. And if you want to know a little more about a Non-Monogamous Lifestyles Association, because it's a fascinating organization, and so go ahead and click on that link that you'll see in the description of the video, and get on our mailing list, and you'll find out more about Non-Monogamous Lifestyles Association.